33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that we are, uh, you are tuned into. We are here every Monday through Friday, though, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific time. And, of course, we are uh, able to give you a podcast of this program at uh, 6.30 Eastern time. And uh, we are looking forward uh, to um, uh, expanding ways you can listen to the Jeff Santos Show in the uh, coming weeks uh, as well. Our next guest is the renaissance man of the uh, Jeff Santos show. He's also a great reporter at Democracy Watch News. Uh, he is with us on Fridays at uh, 5.30 Eastern Time, 2.30 Pacific. Uh, he's also, as I said, a great musician, uh, and he can give us an insight into the uh, into the world of those uh, club goers, uh, the music venues, and so forth. Uh, he is uh, the great Mark Taylor Canfield. We know him as MTC, and we say hello to MTC right now. Hey, Jeff, in the studio as usual. Trying to finish this EP, but it seems like it's taken a long time because the music industry has kind of been in a in a mess over the last few years, but we're working on that. And Wilson's got a new release out, though, called Fierce Bliss. And I think she even got Roger Dean, the guy that used to do the Yes covers, to do her artwork because it looks like his stuff and it's really beautiful. And my interview with Eva Walker and the Black Tones is up at YouTube now, so you can go to my YouTube channel and hear what she had to say about the BBC Arts Hour. Yeah, no, program. that'd be great. We're going to talk about yeah. that a little bit later in your segment, uh, Mark. Uh, that is uh, that is great work, and and uh, you know, uh, really really excited about um, both the interview and and, and her work too. Um, but I want to start off with um, we have been communicating, um, you know, about this issue with a lot of our guests, and I wanted to get your impact because you get to meet a lot of young millennials in your uh, uh, daily work and uh, just your daily life with the music uh, connection, too, of people, and I, I wanted to I wanted to chat with you um, about the issue of the student loans and, you know, and again, if it was wiped out uh, by Joe Biden, and it probably will only be partial maybe it's 50,000 as opposed to 100 and whatever uh but you know how that would make a difference in the people that are you know going to the music venues uh people who are working uh at the clubs you know they're they're a waitress in at night or a bartender uh but in during the day and you know they're working you know maybe another minimum wage job and i think if you were eliminate one of the big expenses for those who graduate from college, whether it's, you know, undergraduate or graduate, then, you know, they, they can li- live a life with the housing costs in Seattle. You know, it, it is out of control and you're not getting the same wage that even though it's $15 an hour with you know minimum wage as maybe New York or L.A. does because it's not seemingly designated as the most expensive city yet it will be you know that's for sure your thoughts about that man well at the very least i mean maybe they would spend a little bit more on uh, tickets for you know music shows in seattle that would be nice for the musicians because you know we we like to make a little money now and then and it's been a yeah. tough couple of years so yeah i think it would really help out i mean it's one of those things that is on my agenda in terms of um eliminating or at least alleviating some of the poverty and houselessness in this country. And one of those um, platform planks is definitely uh, forgiveness of the student loan debts. And that's been a major problem ever since the Occupy movement. You know, people remember back in the 2012, 2012, 2011, people were talking about the same thing. A lot of the people involved in the Occupy movement were students who were really struggling with debt. And we heard all sorts of stories about people you know, working minimum wage jobs with a master's degree and, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in student debt. Um, my friend and representative in Congress, Camilla Jayapal, has really been hating this issue over the last couple of months. She's uh, targeting uh, Joe Biden in most of her tweets saying, hey, Joe, it's time to, to take care of this situation and just eliminate the student debt. We heard some um, pushback on that a few months ago. And so that really worried me that maybe he wasn't, wasn't going to go in that direction. But I'm telling you, people like, you know, our, our own Joe Sandberg at, at your show and 
Pramila Jayapal and some other pretty heavy hitting progressives have really been pushing on this lately. And it seems to be Pramila's major concern at the moment in terms of domestic ec- economy. She just really wants to see the student debt um, totally eliminated and starting, let's start over again. And then, you know, hopefully get some free college education going on. Um, the whole idea that, you know, started in California with free community colleges really needs to spread across the country. We need at least state run colleges to be free for people because come on, it's just costing way too much for an education these days. And the average middle-class working family can't really afford to send their kids to college anymore, Jeff. And that's such a shame. You know, my parents worked really hard to send their children to, to college. And I think that, you know, that should be the dream of every American is to be able to have that college education and you know, get a major degree and a decent job, you know, to take care of your family. So I'm all for it. I hope that um, Joe Biden does the right thing and eliminates this student debt. It would really help young people who are coming right out of college with these huge debts and going right into poverty at a minimum wage job. That's the other element to this, of course. And Joe Sandberg is especially pushing this, especially in California where he's running for governor, and that's the uh, $18 an hour at least you know, minimum wage. We've got to raise the federal minimum wage because people are suffering out there, and they're working really hard. They're working 40 hours a week or multiple jobs and they still can't pay their rent they still can't afford health care they still can't afford to send their kids to college and that's not what the american dream is supposed to be about and i know a lot of billionaires and corporate people are doing just fine thank you very much but uh the working class is really suffering and they need some support and bernie sanders knew that in 2016 that's why we all supported him here in seattle you know go bernie yeah, no, exactly. Go Bernie, and, you know, he loves Seattle, and I know that Jayapal and Sawant and others love him. Uh, it's critical. I mean, again, everything we, we've talked about over the last uh, uh, couple of hours uh, from uh, Alex Lawson's work uh, in trying to, uh, you know, move the Medicare uh, Advantage issue, and, uh, and of course, what we just talked about with Matt Cunningham Cook uh, on the issue uh, of that uh, and, the, and, the, and the amount of money that is being taken from seniors uh, on Medicare Advantage and taken from Medicare, over $143 billion, that's with a B, uh, that is uh, just astounding and great work uh, by the uh, folks at uh, uh, levernews.com. Uh, check it out, folks. It's a great, uh, great source of uh, fantastic information from the former communications director of uh, Bernie Sanders years ago, David Sirota. Uh, I want to take you to another another issue that is, um, you know, across, uh, across America and across the world, for that matter, uh, Mark. And, and and look at what people in Seattle are talking about when it comes to the butchery of Mr. Putin, uh, the human rights concerns. Uh, Seattle, after all, is a place, um, you know, where free thought and, and, and the idea of free expression uh, is there. The great music uh, from Hendrix to the to heart to, uh, of course, Pearl Jam and Nirvana Um you know that's one part of it, but just the understanding of of uh, what pe- what things uh, are there the fifteen dollar minimum wage uh, the medical marijuana the marijuana initiatives and so forth all of these things that were passed by uh, Seattle voters eventually Washington state voters and so forth to me is so critical and I'm wondering what people are are talking to you um you know about it is it is it you know a a question that comes up? You know, why is this happening? What can we do? Is it mainly about refugees, how we can help the refugees that are escaping to Poland and Hungary and everywhere uh, going west? Uh, What are you hearing? Uh, First of all, another example I'd like to see spread across the country are these democracy vouchers um, with publicly financed nonpartisan elections in Seattle. I think that's a good idea. Um, Well, there have been major protests in Seattle. Of course, Seattle is known for its protest heritage going all the way back to the WTO demonstrations in 1999 Mm -hmm. against the World Trade Organization and the Occupy Movement and Black Lives Matter and anti-war protests. So there have been plenty of uh, protests in Seattle. Um, Just a couple days ago, there was one at Seattle Center right underneath the Space Needle at the uh, Mural Amphitheater where I I love to perform. Um, And Adam Smith, who's, you know, know, we we have a lot of disagreements with because of some of his uh, policies, but he is the chair of the House um, Armed Services Committee, and he spoke to the crowd who was totally supportive of the Ukraine and against what Putin is doing there. Um, I mean, there's a lot of push uh, on public officials here in Washington state to speak out. Our governor's definitely spoken out, Jay Inslee, and the city of Seattle 
uh, did pass a resolution supporting uh, democracy in, in Ukraine and, and opposing the invasion by Russia. So um, it's been a big issue in Seattle. A lot of young people involved, I've noticed, but, you know, all ages. I mean, on this particular issue, I've seen, you know, more young people than I've seen for a while. Um, maybe the uh, anti-National uh, Rifle Association protests and the, the pro, you know, uh, gun control uh protests were pretty much young folks and some of the first anti-trump protests were actually high school kids and young college kids organizing them but you see this as well with the the protests against what's happening in ukraine and yeah i think people in seattle take it very seriously they think that um any uh, abuse of human rights on such a scale has got to be stopped somehow and they're hoping that you know um Putin can be discredited to the point where he has to withdraw. I mean, it's just ridiculous what's going on there. The, most of the world is against him. Uh, it's just a terrible human tragedy that could be avoided. Um, and, you know, just because of one man, I think it's not worth it, you know, the bloodshed that's happening. And um, people are standing for what's happening in Ukraine and very proud of those heroes in Ukraine who are standing up for their country because, I mean, we would do the same in the United States. It's just sort of in our blood, you know, when we fought the British and then fought each other, but I think um, Seattle stands very um, strongly behind the people in Ukraine and have had a series of protests and rallies around the city by different groups, and it's going to continue to happen, I'm sure. No doubt. Talking with Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show. Uh, if you want to give us a shout, you can at 772-223-2362. We'll try to see if we can sneak in a call for maybe John in Minneapolis uh, before we uh, hit the top of the hour and the end of the show. I, I want to ask you a little bit um, about the excitement of, of Democrats, uh, particularly those in Seattle and, and particularly the, the millennials. Uh, you know, I've been saying for a long time now that uh, Joe Biden has to do not only the student loans things, but talk about, uh, you know, the initiatives of the Green New Deal. I mean, again, young people in their 20s and 30s are going to inherit the country and, uh, and the planet. And if, you know, if we don't get the leadership from Joe Biden on this, you know, our friends, in, and I'm loosely here, uh, in, in places like China and India, uh, both uh, dictators, um, are not going to uh, not going to lead here. They, they are, they're about profit. They're about, you know, um, their own countries and not about the planet. And, and this is the opportunity for the United States to lead. Do you feel that if, if there is not enough movement on domestic issues, that a lot of those people that you talk to that came out for Bernie are going to sit on their hands and uh, not really be uh, that interested in what's happening in, in the federal elections uh, come uh, the uh, November of, uh, of this year? Well, you know, locally here in the Northwest, a shout out to Jamie McLeod Skinner, who's running against Kurt Schrader, who's like uh, the Joe Manchin of the House. Um, and, you know, she uh, articulated very clearly during a uh, pro Progressive Democrats of America town hall that, you know, Democrats have got to learn to speak to uh, the royal communities. And um, she said that, you know, Democrats have done a terrible job of mes messaging their ideas in rural communities. And she's out there um, and I think is a good example of, of what got Bernie so popular in the Northwest and in Washington State was she's going out to rural communities where they don't hear from Democrats very often, just having some very honest discussions with them. And she says that basically when you find out what people really want, it turns out to be a relatively progressive agenda. They just don't know how to articulate it, and the Democrats don't know how to reach out to them and, mm -hmm. you know, get past the, you know, us versus them, small town versus, you know, Ivy League college towns or whatever get past that barrier so that we can have honest discussions so man um i'm looking for seattle to continue to lead the way in those kinds of politics um it's very important that uh we get more young people involved there i, I still find myself involved in uh webinars and conferences with uh, a lot of white-haired people um on the progressive side they really need to do a better job of bringing young people in not that our, our elders aren't doing a great job. They are here in Seattle, especially in representing the progressive side of, of the political spectrum. But we need more young people involved. And I'm hoping that some of the musicians like, you know, Marshall Law, who was speaking out during this BBC Arts Hour broadcast that took place in Seattle a week ago, um, people like him who speak out politically, who speak from their heart and are willing to do music that confronts the status quo, 
I think that's really important. Um, both, you know, so you have to have a double-edged sword here. You have to have uh, candidates that are willing to go into rural communities and talk honestly with the people who live there. And you also have to have um, artists and other influencers, as they're called these days, to step up and speak the truth to power and make sure that people realize that artists have a lot to say, musicians have a lot to say about what's going on in the world right now. And it's time for all of us, and especially artists, to pay attention and try to be relevant with our music and deal with what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, we had the song, song about the Showbox Theater here in Seattle. That's an example. Um, like I said, a lot of martial uh, law bands, uh, music here in Seattle is like that. They were the band that was there at CHOP every night for, I think, 11 days in a row performing for the protesters, at least those 24-hour protests that we had here that went on for months. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of the people in Seattle. I'm proud of Ann Wilson, the former singer for Heart. She's doing a good job of doing socially conscious music these days, and that's kind of new for the music business where it has all become sort of, um, you know, money, money, money. And she has this new song called Greed, and, you know, is she also... Uh, covered that song, uh, The Revolution Starts Now. So she's out there uh, trying no, to be cutting edge. You know, yeah. I, I think that, you know, if you if you look at that, um, you know, that, you know, uh, what is she, I presume she's in her 60s, um, you know, Ann Wilson and, and Nancy Wilson. I just think that, uh, you know, together, um, you know, only great sound, but uh, it's great to see the activists there. But I'm wondering, you know, uh, of the younger generation, uh, you know, are, are they at all? I mean, are, are they people still wearing masks in Seattle? Uh, are, are they just, you know, talking yes. uh, about, you know, when they go into, uh, you know, the music venues? Uh, are they are they wearing masks? Are they required to be vaccinated? Is that, you know, I know that, you know, a lot of events that take place in Los Angeles, um, you know, recently have, have required that everybody, you know, shows a proof of vaccination and so forth. And I mean, what is what is the requirement there? Then I want to take a call from our good friend, uh, John in Minneapolis. As of March 12th, the Martin Luther King County and Washington State lifted their mask mandate. Um, but you're still uh, expected to wear it. Uh, on train and light rail, on buses and medical facilities, and when you use Uber. But a lot of the uh, performing arts venues are also requiring it still. They're not um, relinquishing that mandate. And, and that includes the opera, the Seattle Symphony, some of the big, bigger um, places, the Seattle Repertory Theater, where I performed in a theater piece once, the Fifth Avenue Theater, the Paramount. These are all big. And then you've got some of the great music clubs like the Moore Theater and the Neptune Theater, which is one of my favorite in the district, an old movie theater that they turned into a great music uh, that, uh, venue. That's where Ann Wilson, by the way, is going to be performing in October. She's actually got a contest where she's giving away free tickets to people in other parts of the country to fly to Seattle to her show. But um, a lot of smaller venues have banded together to kind of keep the rules the way they were, much like in, on Broadway in New York City, right, where there are four, 41 theaters that have decided to keep the requirements in place despite these rollbacks. So the same thing is happening in Seattle. Um, most of the clubs and parties and um, restaurants I go to, people are still wearing their masks, um, even outdoors in a lot of places. So I think, you know, people in Seattle have their own way of doing things. And we were one of the first, you know, to have to deal with this issue. So I think the the caution is going to linger here and people are going to uh, play it safe. I definitely am. I still wear my mask. Um, and it's best, of course, you know, to have the good masks. Uh, yeah, so the N95s, exactly. We recommend those. No, well, I think it's so Governor important. Inslee, yeah, we were able to get some of those. And thanks to Joe Biden and also Governor Inslee for making a lot of those. Um, masks available here for free in Washington State. It was really nice to be able to go get one at your local drugstore or whatever f for free. So, yeah, those kind of things are going to continue, Jeff. I mean, it, it's just uh, that's that's where we're at right now. The, regardless of the fact that uh, the county and the governor have lifted the mandates, a lot of restaurants, bars, and theaters and music clubs are just still requiring them. The BBC required it. Uh, the Rainier Arts Center here when they had their live broadcast and, you know, invited people in. Um, so everyone wore a mask there. So that's just the way, way it's going in Seattle. Yeah. 
All right, let's go to the phones uh, and and talk about COVID with somebody who uh, has been uh, like when Dr. Kavanaugh, who we look to have on next Thursday, uh, talk about uh, what is still lingering out there and more and more uh, variants that are out there. Our good friend uh, Steve, uh, I should say, John in Minneapolis.